Today is the 56th anniversary of the Fair Housing Act, which prohibits discrimination in housing. It's a cause near and dear to the heart of the woman who gave birth to none other than Beyonce. This matters to Memphis because the Queen Bee maker herself, Tina Knowles, was in Memphis to share her passion for Habitat for Humanity. She did one interview during her visit and shared irreplaceable insights. So, Miss Tina, thank you so much for joining Live at Night. Thank you for having me. You could be <laughs> anywhere in the world. Why are you in Memphis? I'm here for the Habitat for Humanity event, and um, I'm a big fan of the organization. Uh, have been for a long time. Many years ago, my family and put up the money well. for two homes, How you doing? and we got to go out and build with Destiny's Child, right. and it was like the most fulfilling amazing thing for me. I've seen that you care about stable housing. Absolutely. Why is that such a big deal for you? My church was very involved and we took over a church downtown which ministered to the homeless. My brother at the time was homeless. Uh, he's bipolar and he, um, it, I mean, it just touched my heart to, to be able to help and provide those. So we built, uh, we put up the seed money for uh, the Timonos House, Knowles Timonos House in, in Houston. That was the first complex where they provided 23 small apartments. And from that, I'm proud to say that the city has built more and we have now five of those. So it's changed lives for people, you know, just for them to get back on their feet. That's beautiful. Yeah. Fashion has been a big thing for you. Yes. House of Darion. Yes. Right. Listen to you. Oh, I learned you fast. You pronounced it right. I learned fast. Talk about your journey with your career. Well, you know, I started off doing the hair of Destiny's Child and, you know, and then I wound up just doing the clothes out of necessity. And um, and it just took off. You know, Wyclef John told me one time they lost the kid, the uh, girl's clothes. And um, and I did outfits from, from camouflage. I was borrowing things and he was like, yo, who styled y'all? And the girl said, Beyonce said, my mom did. And he said, you should do it all the time. And it made them very unique. They were very young and some of the clothes were too grown and always black. So I got involved in it and um, it, you know, that's how I started and just creating something out of nothing, which is what my mom did. You know, I learned it from her. Yeah, and I was interested to see about you and your high school band. Well, well, you were a group yes. um, based off the Supremes. Tell me yes, about that. Yes, we I were a singing know. group called the Bell Tones, and it's just so funny because we, you know, we're really good. We won every competition we did. We were great at harmonies, but our outfits were kicking because I was <laughs> me and my mom were making the outfits, and um, you know, it's all come in. I, I say that God gave me all these tools. And he gave me that tool uh, to kind of manage the group because I was kind of like the manager and um, harmony and how you dressed. And, and little did I know that that would prepare me for a career in my life, you know, with, with my daughter's group. And so, yeah. The original momager right here. So, <laughs> you know, I don't care what anybody says, you're the original momager. <laughs> what advice would you give to mothers out there um, just to motivate them with their children? Just to totally find out what is your child's passion. Um, sometimes parents don't even ask their kid what's, what their passion is. They want them to have the same passion as them. Or I want my daughter to be a lawyer, or I want her to be, you know, and they might want to be an artist. And so whatever makes that kid tick, you should just get behind that 100% and try to motivate them and try to find opportunities and guide them in that. I really believe that with all my heart. Okay, I also have to ask you about your Benjamin Button secret. How are you aging backwards? <laughs> I stay very active all the time. Um, I'm 70 years old. I just Lies. turned 70 in January. Lies. And it's getting harder and harder, I have to say, but I take really good care of my skin. I exercise regularly. I drink a lot of water. And um, I just try to wake up every day positive, doing some good stuff. I think that's really the key to staying younger. And I, I make sure that I'm around young energy and people that I can pour into. Uh, because when I'm gone, I want people to say, you know, she was here and she made a difference. And that is, you know, the best gift of all. 
What are we going to see from Miss Tina Knowles in the coming years? Uh, wait, wait, you're acting. Oh, no, I, I just acted this. one time. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but I mean, but that's, it's new and exciting. I was so excited to see it's something else, another log on the fire for you. Well, it was on my bucket list. And um, Bishop Jakes called me personally and asked me to do it. And you don't say no to Bishop Jakes. But it was fun, but it's not for me. <laughs> Too many takes. It's stressful. <laughs> that is a stressful thing to it's do. It's a stressful thing, but I admire people that do it. Okay, so you're in Memphis. I have to ask the question, <laughs> all right, because I know you're from Texas, but uh, barbecue, all oh. right. D wet or dry rub? Uh, dry rub. Really? Yeah. What is the one thing that you hope uh, the Memphis community takes from you, this Women Who Builds Habitat for Humanity event? What, do you, what message do you hope they'll take? Just giving back. Like, it's so good for your spirit. And uh, it's the best gift that you can give to yourself to give to others. I really believe that. Um, it's not just some cliche. It has blessed me my whole life. Are you excited about uh, the country um, just, breaking the album? All, just breaking all of these barriers, breaking uh, records. It's so yeah. exciting. Well, I'm, I'm very happy about Country Carter. Um, you know, we grew up in Texas and country music influenced. Uh, we liked a lot of it. Um, it. But the best part about Cowboy Carter is that it is breaking barriers. It is giving other young country artists, you know, they're, they're careers are skyrocketing. And um, they're getting eight, I read that one of the guys, uh, Shibuzi, I believe, he had eight million streams. He is elated. So it's all about, you know, the history of black people in country music because, it, you know, it's, it's about reclamation that we are reclaiming that. And so I'm always proud because when Beyonce does something, it is very intentional. It is not just something that she just decided to do. She did all her research and, you know, as she got into it, she was like, oh my God, I didn't know these things and I want everybody to know that. So she gives you food for thought and that's the main thing about the record. Other, other than that, I think it's like her best work. It's, it's really amazing. And all the people crying. Like there are all these people who are listening and just <clears throat> crying yeah. in all countries. So yes. it's really amazing. Well, I can't thank you enough, Miss Tina Knowles, for joining Live at Nine and gracing Memphis with your spirit. Yes, thank you. And Knowles visited the National Civil Rights Museum after our fireside chat with the Habitat for Humanity of Greater Memphis audience. She says it was the one place that she had to see before leaving Memphis. Well, it's been 